There's this war that's happening in the country just south of us, a war in which 100,000 people have been killed since 2007. In today's world, the internet, social media, and cyberspace have overcome the majority of everyone's lives, especially the youth of our society. Most people on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok are there to join the trends and the latest viral challenges. But some are so obsessed with the spotlight that they would do anything to capture the audience's attention, even challenging and threatening one of the most notorious drug lords in Mexico. This was unfortunately the case for the TikToker who got brutally murdered after disrespecting the cartel. In the heartland of Mexico, cartel and gang violence casts a shadow over many cities and states. Communities are being torn apart by crime, and people are suffering due to the brutality and violent activities caused by criminal organizations. For years, the cartel's domains have expanded, and along with it, the crime rate in Mexico has risen. Turf wars and ongoing battles between gangs and cartels have left communities devastated. It has been a continuous effort from law enforcement to bring these criminal organizations under control, but the struggle remains constant. Now, the Tijuana cartel traditionally ran the drugs business in the city, but the Sinaloa cartel has moved into their turf and taken away some of the business. It means now that the city is at the center of a major and bloody turf war, making it one of the most dangerous cities in the country. Currently, there are numerous cities and states being overwhelmed by cartel violence, but the three most outstanding states are Sinaloa, Durango, and Chihuahua. Some call these states the Golden Triangle because it is traditionally where opium and marijuana are cultivated and harvested for drug creation. Basically, it's the powerhouse of these cartels. Narcotics are manufactured in these places and transferred across the border. It's where their profits begin. Then, there are endless routes and pathways through the cities where narcotics are secretly transported from Mexico to the United States. Now this is very important. These drug smugglers need to ensure that their products arrive safely and efficiently across the border because this is where they make money. The United States is the number one consumer of narcotics. The United States is the biggest consumer of both legal and illegal drugs in the world. Now, the border between Tijuana and San Diego is one of the busiest crossing points. It's been at the center of trafficking for decades, and it's not just drugs, but it's human smuggling as well. Let's return to how cartels, drug trafficking, and rivalry sparks turf wars that negatively affect the lives of Mexican communities and populations. Drug trafficking and smuggling have been the main industry and sources of income for these crime organizations. That's why they're known as drug cartels, because they manufacture and distribute drugs for profit. Everything sounds systematic and businesslike, but that's not all. There is the matter of rivalries. So many gangs and cartels want a piece of the drug business pie, but not enough profit to go around. And these cartels are not crazy about sharing and caring. To possess all the benefits of the drug trade, they need to be the ones in power. Whoever is the last one standing will gain all the profit, authority, and domain. Therefore, turf wars break out, and these organizations fight to the death. The fight over control of the smuggling industry turned the entire nation into a battlefield. Innocent people lose their lives over these violent rivalries, but these cartels could care less. Nothing matters to them except power and control. Ecuador is in the grips of an unprecedented drug war. Violence and murder between rival gangs has become so out of control that the government has declared multiple states of emergency and the military is now enforcing a 9 p.m. curfew in the worst hit cities. Simplemente soy un comandante aquí en la región de Michoacán, comandante aquí del cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. Eh, a mí no puede haber alguien que diga eh, secuestramos, eh, robamos o extorsionamos. Nosotros no nos dedicamos a eso. Nosotros nos dedicamos, somos narcotraficantes. Nosotros este, producimos, exportamos y vendemos droga. Eso es de lo que 
eh, papá de nosotros hace el dinero. Esa es, 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 la, es la empresa de nosotros. You might wonder if these crime organizations ever decided to join forces like the Suicide Squad or something. Maybe for a better alliance or to defeat a common enemy. The answer is yes. There have been times when cartels would join forces or smaller gangs would integrate with the major organizations. But most of these alliances usually don't end well. The reason being, they're too power hungry. All these cartels want total domination and authority. They're either using each other for benefits or they're waiting for the chance to undermine the other. For example, the Sinaloa and Tijuana cartel have been known to join forces in partnership before, but that story didn't have a happy ending. Instead, the two ended their relationship in turf wars and vengeance. It was even more brutal than your first breakup. Then you have a whole other situation where an internal battle could ignite within a cartel, and they could break into factions, forming new gangs and organizations, much like what happened with El Mencho and the Milenio Cartel. His name might sound familiar because his name was constantly plastered in the news. There's a very high bounty offered by the United States and Mexico for anyone who could provide information that would lead to his arrest. El Mencho is wanted for undocumented possession of firearms, drug trafficking, and involvement in organized crime. This man is no joke. He's actually the aggressor in this story. El Mencho, or Nemicio Oseguera Cervantes, is a well-known Mexican kingpin and leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, a crime group based in Jalisco. There are probably a few documentaries made about him already. If there aren't, Netflix is probably working on one. Anyway, El Mencho is a man born into a family of poverty in Aguilija, Michoacán, Mexico. At a young age, he couldn't finish primary school and had to help his family harvest avocados. And by 14 years old, he started guarding marijuana plantations, which is an odd job for a teenager. It is not confirmed whether El Mencho started involving himself in narcotics transactions at this point, but it would make sense for a poor kid to be driven into this business due to poverty. Still, El Mencho decided to immigrate to the United States in the 1980s to find a better life for himself. But when he arrived in the US, El Mencho found himself immersed in the narcotics business, making and selling methamphetamine in Redwood City and he was arrested when he was as young as 19. After breaking the law many times, El Mencho was arrested and deported back to Mexico. Back in his home country, El Mencho didn't know what to do, so on a whim, he decided to become a cop. Yes, a cop. El Mencho was a law enforcement officer for a short period of time. Obviously, it didn't last long. El Mencho ended his law enforcement career early, to commit full-time to the Milenio Cartel. Some people speculate that El Mencho joined the force to gain an understanding of the system to advance his crime-related business. Even though it's only speculation, having someone who is a former officer of the law and understands the criminal system can be a great addition to any team, especially if you're dealing with shady business. With his knowledge and experience, El Mencho rises rapidly into a leading role in the Milenio Cartel and quickly made a name for himself in the criminal world. El Mencho became a threat to law enforcement and other cartels alike. Eventually, the opportunity came for El Mencho to seize the leadership position. When the former leader of the Milenio cartel was apprehended by the authorities, the cartel broke into fractions. One of the parties was led by El Mencho, and he transformed them into the Jalisco New Generation cartel that we know today. El Mencho has led the Jalisco New Generation Cartel to become one of the most powerful cartels in Mexico today. Their group can rival other major cartels like Sinaloa, Tijuana, or Gulf Cartel. Clearly, El Mencho is a force to be reckoned with and a talented individual. He managed to turn a broken sector into an influential crime organization in very little time. Of course, the more powerful you are, the more blood you shed. A man like El Mencho isn't known for his kind-hearted or gentle nature. He's a drug lord for a reason. Therefore, why would someone make the mistake of upsetting him, or worse, challenging him? You would think no one would be so irrational, but there's always a selected few. 
In June 2022, an unknown teenager posted a video on TikTok challenging and insulting the crime boss, El Mencho, in Spanish. Mira bien, hijo de tu puta puta madre. A mí me pe a verga el Mencho. Aquí si no más se los digo puro 420. Yo no me duermo como el pirata o el chanito de culacá. Yo soy inmortal, yo soy intocable y yo soy un pato con el diablo, cabrón. Así que si no sabes de mí, de existencia, yo te vine a mandar fuego, Mencho. Así que a mí no me da miedo decir esto, cabrón. Yo lo digo fuera en cámaras o aquí, cabrón. Así que a mí me la madre el Mencho. There's no other way to describe this than signing your death wish. What on earth possesses this young TikToker to do such a thing remains unknown. Of course, the name and identity of this teenager remain hidden, which might be a good thing. This is a very good example of the extent some influencers and content creators would go to achieve publicity. In the cyber world, it's extremely easy to get lost in false stimulation and superficial spotlight. The concept of online interaction has become so big that people allow it to define themselves. Many people, especially young adults and teenagers, are too immersed in the virtual concept of popularity and it indirectly affects their reality. It's almost like they're being controlled by their social media accounts, but instead, it should be the other way around. Keep in mind that social media and virtual platforms aren't bad. It's the people who abuse these platforms who are to blame. There are a lot of great influencers and public figures who utilize social media for the betterment of their work and effectively communicate with their followers. If you feel like using your TikTok or Instagram account for art, entertainment, food, pranks, fireworks, or even professional motorcycle stunts, that is totally all right, because everyone should be free to express their creativity in their own ways. Except this isn't a funny prank or a bucket list dare. It's a life-threatening situation. It's not funny or cool to challenge one of the most wanted men in Mexico. There's a reason why El Mencho is hunted by the authorities. The crimes that this man has committed surpass any average criminal. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel is known to have its own armed force that could rival the SWAT team. There has been an incident where El Mencho's cartel targeted the Mexican military and law enforcement officials. On April 6th, gunmen from the New Generation Cartel used a burning vehicle to block a road in San Sebastián del Oeste, Jalisco. They opened fire at a convoy of the Jalisco State Police, resulting in the death of 15 policemen and injuring five more. This event marked the deadliest single attack on Mexico's police force since 2010. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel took the fight to the next level, shooting down a military helicopter, helicopter with a rocket-propelled grenade, killing people, six of them, last week. On the same day, the cartel's hitmen killed Miguel Angel Caicedo Vargas, the police chief of Zocolo de Torres. Later, there was another similar event in Via Purificación, Jalisco. El Mencho's associates used a rocket-propelled grenade launcher to shoot down a Mexican army helicopter, resulting in the death of nine soldiers. They also set buses, banks, and gas stations on fire, affecting multiple towns across different states. It was pure disaster. The new generation cartel can be considered the bringer of chaos and death. Even federal authorities can barely keep them under control. At this rate, El Mencho is set to become the next deadliest drug lord like El Chapo or Pablo Escobar. Since El Chapo is imprisoned and Pablo Escobar is dead, it won't be long until we see El Mencho rise to the throne. You can see why it's not wise to anger El Mencho or the new generation cartel or any criminal for that matter. Let's rewind a little, because in the TikTok video, the teenager mentioned two other names. He said, I don't sleep like El Pirata or El Chanito de Culiacán. Who are El Pirata and El Chanito de Culiacán? Well, they are two other influencers who did a very similar thing to this teenager. All three of them decided to post videos on their social media to badmouth El Mencho and the new generation cartel. The first person we should talk about is El Pirata, because many people are familiar with this individual. El Pirata de Culiacán tenía 17 años. Se hizo famoso en redes sociales desde hace dos años por subir videos mostrando armas de grueso calibre, autos de lujo, 
joyas, además de emborracharse y drogarse. Juan Luis Lugones Rusoles, also known as El Pirata de Culiacán, gained widespread attention as a young Mexican YouTuber who captivated the public from an early age. Juan Luis was born in Sinaloa, Mexico, the home state of the famous drug lord, El Chapo. The YouTuber was born into a troubled family, and his childhood was marked by the lack of a father figure. His father left before he was born, and his mother abandoned him at a young age. Juan Luis was raised under the care of his grandmother. From the start, you can see that this young man lacks a childhood foundation. Therefore, it makes sense for him to want to seek uplifting attention elsewhere. Seeking an escape from his mundane life in Sinaloa, Juan Luis left his hometown at the age of 15. He relocated to the nearby town of Culiacán, where he took up car washing for a living. Juan Luis's rise to stardom on social media was completely coincidental. One day, someone recorded a video of Juan Luis consuming an entire bottle of vodka, and the post went viral overnight, launching his social media career into full force. Yes, Juan Luis became a YouTube sensation by becoming an alcoholic. The digital world possesses a unique way to indulge one's life in views, likes, and engagement over irresponsible acts. Juan Luis evolved into an object of amusement for the online community, transitioning from a minimum wage laborer to a thoughtless influencer. Following the viral video, Juan Luis started gaining a massive amount of followers and subscribers across his social media accounts. By the time he turned 17, Juan Luis had already garnered thousands of followers on Facebook and Instagram. His followers recognized him as El Pirata de Culiacán, which translates to the Pirate of Culiacán. And to maintain his popularity, Juan Luis continued to immerse himself in reckless activities like drinking, smoking, and partying until oblivion. If you search the web, most of Juan Luis's videos are of him chugging bottles after bottles of alcohol. Another thing to keep in mind is the legal drinking age in Mexico is 18, which means Juan Luis has been drinking underage for who knows how long. But apparently his friends and followers love it when he drinks and acts irresponsibly. They cheer him on and encourage him to party every second of the day like there's no tomorrow. And Juan Luis did just that. Juan Luis started to fill his social media pages with pictures of himself driving fancy cars, hanging out with many women, partying with other influencers, and even posing with firearms. His purpose was to influence people to believe that he's living a life of luxury and wealth, painting a picture of a successful man, but in reality, he's a misguided teenager. The young man surrounds himself with people who are exactly like him, young and reckless, or people who want to see him act crazy for publicity. Maybe it comes from Juan Luis's broken childhood, but the YouTuber allows himself to get lost in this sea of chaotic demands. He wants the attention, the spotlight, and the stimulation. It gives him a false sense of power and pride that he never experienced before. Therefore, he keeps committing to it, not caring about the consequences. Though there were signs of Juan Luis beginning to understand the repercussions of his actions. In July 2017, the YouTuber did an interview with Pepe Garza, and during the interview, he expressed his acknowledgement of his alcohol problems. Lo que pasa es que la gente también me dice, eh, compa, ¿cómo le haces para aguantar tanto, para pa aguantar tanto tomar? Así me dice a veces y yo le digo, y yo no más me río, no, pues no sé yo, no sé yo cómo le hago, la neta. Juan Luis acknowledged that he had a problem with alcohol, but he hasn't done anything to help fix the problem. He expressed that he wants to change to further his music career, which was taking a turn in a good direction. At this point, Juan Luis was just signed with a major record label company. At the end of the interview, the host wished him luck in his career journey and hoped he could overcome his drinking problem so they could see him thrive for many years to come. But unfortunately, Juan Luis didn't take this advice to heart. It's a shame, but during one of his drunken moments, Juan Luis decided to record and publish a video on his social media. The content of the video is unquestionably to badmouth the drug lord, El Mencho. El Mencho a mí, me, me, a me. Again, the reason for posting this video could be purely for publicity. There's no definite explanation as to why Juan Luis would commit such a suicidal act 
other than to appease his followers and show off how tough he was. The video was posted in December 2017. In the video, Juan Luis had a very careless attitude and cursed at El Mencho. He specifically said, El Mencho a mi me pila la verga. In English, it translates to, El Mencho can peel my d It's a clear sign of disrespect, and it didn't end well for Juan Luis. The exposure and limelight had gotten to his head, making him think he's invincible. Well, the YouTuber soon found out he's not a man of steel. Not long after Juan Luis posted the video, he decided to attend a party with his friends at a local bar. He even posted the location of the bar on his social media, encouraging his followers to pay a visit to the establishment. Unfortunately, the party ended in bloodshed and gunshots. Four gunmen entered the establishment and annihilated Juan Luis. The teenager suffered from 15 bullet wounds and died before paramedics arrived. It is still unclear who was behind the killing, but it is not hard to figure out who would want to eliminate him. Authorities believed it was the work of El Mencho. Not anyone can have someone assassinated in broad daylight without leaving any clues behind. Even average criminals aren't this good. This crime seemed like the work of a professional group. Juan Luis had publicly disrespected El Mencho on the internet, and a few days later, he's killed by mysterious masked men. Of all the people in the bar, he happened to be the target. Anyone can put two and two together. El Mencho surely had the motive, and he definitely had the resources and manpower to pull this off. So Juan Luis's case is an example to never act on your arrogance and sense of superiority. You might get yourself into a deadly situation with no second chances. The other person we need to speak about is El Chanito de Culiacán. He's also an influencer, much like Juan Luis or a pirata. He was known to be a rival of Juan Luis, mocking him online for his excessive drinking and thirst for publicity. El Chanito de Culiacán and El Pirata had a series of back and forth social media banter and retaliation. Although the two men were on opposite terms, they ended up in the same reckless position as one another. In 2018, after the death of Juan Luis, El Chanito de Culiacán decided to post a similar video on YouTube, challenging El Mencho. Of course, the video has since been deleted from El Chanito de Culiacán's account, but viewers can see that the YouTuber was carrying a large firearm from the clip. And he was saying something along the lines of, El Mencho can suck my dick. It's insane how El Chanito de Culiacán was criticizing Juan Luis for his reckless stunt, but he's doing the exact same thing. But the deed was done. Followers of El Chanito de Culiacán were holding their breath and praying for the young man. It was horrifying enough that one person's life was just taken by the cartel. Now they have another YouTuber who wants to play with fire. The price of challenging the leader of one of the deadliest cartels isn't as simple as a homicide or assassination. There are chances that innocent bystanders who are caught in the crossfire will lose their lives as well. Many lives could be affected by one impulsive statement. Luckily, El Chanito de Culiacán came to his senses eventually. He posted a follow-up video apologizing to El Mencho for his disrespectful comments. Mencho. Even though the apology was made, everyone was still worried for El Chanito de Culiacán, especially when he didn't make another appearance on his social media and wasn't updating his followers. Some people thought he was kidnapped or killed by the new generation cartel. A lot of people assumed El Chanito de Culiacán was dead. It was in 2019 when the hosts of the Margarito Music official YouTube channel publicly announced in one of their videos that El Chanito de Culiacán was staying at a rehabilitation center in Culiacán, Sinaloa, which is why he wasn't creating any more content online. One of the hosts, Margarito, stated, He has decided to quit. He needs professional help. He is fine. He is in good health. He is recovering. Maybe he hit rock bottom and said he was going to quit that addiction. He was going to regenerate himself. 
Maybe it does take rock bottom for someone to realize their mistakes. Fortunately, El Chanito de Culiacan's rock bottom wasn't as terrible as Juan Luis's. Still, he's very lucky to have overcome that self-made obstacle. Later, it was from the same channel that El Chanito de Culiacan announced that he was free from addiction. El Chanito de Culiacan eventually migrated to TikTok, where he makes shorter content about himself. In 2022, he publicly announced the arrival of his newborn daughter on his TikTok. Hey, huele verga, todo lo eso que tienen 25, 26 años ya, los viejones que no tienen, que no quieren tener viejas, pues no se quieren hacer responsables. Mira, ya ni yo, ya, ya tengo una, ay mía, dile, huele verga, dile, dile. <laughs> Ya que ya se pongan a hacer plebe, dile. Ya que se pongan a hacer plebe ahí, eh, para que lo batallen. Ya ni toda la verga. Ya, ya. ni yo, ya. Ya tengo ahí una mía. Eh, vea mía. Al rato, dile. Al rato. Huele a mandilones. Content with his new life, El Chanito de Culiacán begins advocating for young people to be more responsible and take the next step in their adulthood. It's amazing to see that this story has a happy ending. Instead of violence and bloodshed, you have a reformed young man who has overcome his addiction and transformed into a responsible family man. Maybe inspired by El Chanito de Culiacán, the teenager who posted the offending clip against El Mencho in 2022 decided to publicly apologize for his actions as well. Para el señor Mencho, pido disculpas lo que dije, no estaba bien, no estaba consciente de lo que estaba diciendo, estaba mal, ese día amanecí bien pendejo, no me di las consecuencias, me dejé llevar por los seguidores y pido disculpas, se te quiere, a ti a tu familia. Y Mencho, no me mates cabrón, yo tengo familia así como usted y pido mis disculpas. Aquí todos cometemos errores y pues Dios está viendo todo eso, así que pido disculpas porque la verdad no sé lo que estaba haciendo. Todos cometemos errores y yo tengo problemas psicológicos, así que acuérdese, señor, que se le quiere. In the clip, the teen is sincere and apologetic. Hopefully, it's enough to keep him out of trouble. So far, nothing has happened yet, but the future is full of uncertainty. These three cases are great examples of arrogance, false sense of superiority, and pretentiousness. Hopefully, no one else would commit such careless acts of provocation against a notorious crime boss. The next person might not be so lucky. However, there's another theory on why El Mencho didn't take any actions against these young influencers. A rumor has been going around that El Mencho might be dead. Again, these are unconfirmed hearsay. In 2020, El Mencho was reported to have suffered from terrible kidney diseases. He had a hospital built in the village of El El Siwatl for himself to undergo treatment. There were reports that the crime boss hadn't been seen in years due to his illness. Then, in 2022, some unverified sources reported that El Mencho had died from respiratory arrest while receiving treatment at the hospital. These reports have not yet been confirmed, so it may or may not be true. The well-being of El Mencho affects the entire Jalisco New Generation cartel. Therefore, if something did happen to their leader, they would probably try to keep a low profile about it in case an internal war broke out. At the same time, El Mencho is powerful and wealthy enough to receive the best medical care that money can buy. He had an entire hospital built for himself. It's not unreasonable to assume that he also has the best doctors and nurses tending to his illness. The man could very well still be alive, and the report could be false. There's no answer yet. We'll have to wait for someone to confirm the status of Mexico's most wanted cartel boss. Hopefully, law enforcement could keep these cartel activities to a minimum and give the country a chance to recover from the destruction caused by these organizations. And if you're a TikToker, YouTuber, streamer, influencer, or risk taker who wants to do something dangerous, we might suggest bungee jumping or swimming with sharks. Please, don't challenge El Mencho or another cartel boss, because you're not only putting yourself at risk, but others as well. Would you rather upset a drug lord or skydive off Mount Everest? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.